This week was surprising. We dipped below 30 for a few days and then quickly went back above. Who knows what's going to happen today and tomorrow. By the time you're watching this, things could be different in the Dow versus gold ratio. And you'll see three progressive bubbles made and pumped up by the Fed. That one got higher than the next, except for this last one, which is a little bit deflated or a lot of it deflated. And we're just waiting for this final one to fully deflate to 1980 levels. And I'll show you that chart. Forthwithly, gold open interest resets downward. We are at around 450,000 contracts again, which is good news and shows that we have the fuel for another leg up. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to start right now, but open interest is low enough in the futures market that we have room. We have fuel for a rally when it decides to begin. In this episode, we explore the recent fluctuations in the precious metals market, focusing on the $30 resistance level for silver and the $2,300 mark for gold. We analyze historical financial bubbles and discuss potential future scenarios for investors considering the current economic indicators like the gold to silver ratio. Join us as we dive into the intriguing dynamics between precious metals and real estate during economic upheaval with historical insights and current market trends guiding our discussion. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more insights. Chart I could jig it from gold charts are us really they could jig it. I just brought it up. Uh, stuck at the 1929 Dow Jones top. By the Dow Jones top in 1929, right before the crash of 1929, I'm in a Great Depression mood because I'm reading a diary about the Great Depression, and I'll show you the entry at the end of these slides uh, about the more extreme note that I found than the uh, 75 ounces of silver. For a house in Germany, even more extreme than that, and it's at the end here. But anyway, stuck at the 1929 Dow Jones top. This is relative to gold. So the Dow relative to gold was about 19 ounces uh, to buy the Dow, and this was in 1929. And you can see here that we've been stuck in this range since about 2018, it looks like 2019. I don't know the exact year, but in the last five, six years, that's where we've been stuck at the 1929 top of stocks versus gold. The second bubble was in the 1960s, 1970s, with the fall of London gold pool and the end of convertibility, the closing of the gold window by Nixon. That led to a collapse of the bubble in the 1970s. And here we have the third bubble, which was the most extreme of all into the 2000 top, into the NASDAQ top. And we haven't gotten anywhere near that spectacular bubble. Again, we are stuck at the first bubble top in 1929. Also, I wanted to put some perspective on this, this Great Depression over here. On this gold to stocks ratio, gold to Dow ratio, or Dow to gold ratio, whatever it is, uh, when we're down over here, the problem, what makes people poor in a depression is not necessarily that stocks are not expensive relative to gold or they're really cheap. It's that people bought on the way up, up, up over here, and then they had to sell and they lost all their money. So you have st cheap stocks, but nobody has any money. And it's the same thing with other goods and services. They can't afford food, they can't afford shelter. They're very poor and it's a depression. But if somebody just held on and didn't participate in this bubble and just held on to their money, meaning their gold and their silver, not necessarily their dollars, because again, the dollar is a derivative, then they would have been fine. Would have, they would have been able to pick up a bunch of stuff at a discount. Same thing over here, 1970s, 1980s. This was also a depression. But you see here, the Fed tried to pump up the bubble again, up to about 22 ounces of gold, but haven't gotten anywhere near the second or third bubble tops. So we're waiting for this final one to deflate or this half bubble to deflate. And that should lead us to the end game in my estimation. Let's go to the next slide. So gold open interest, this is important for traders. Uh, it looks like we are down to about 444,000 contracts. I think that was the low. I think it went a little bit lower than this. This is from two days ago, this chart. Uh, but it's around here. And we see that we have liquidated on the on the open interest in gold futures from about 400, 540,000 contracts to about 440,000 contracts. It's about, it's about 100,000 contracts liquidated uh, since mid-May. And the pr price of gold has not gone down. They've gone from highs of about 24.50 to about 2,400 now, so about 50 bucks. That's not really anything uh, these days. Meaning we have plenty of fuel for new contracts to be opened, 
and the price to head higher. Whether it starts now, I do not know, but the fuel is there to make it sustain once it does start. And we see a longer view, a longer term view going back to 2022 of open interest. We can see that we are uh, in the average range that we've been in uh, below average, really. I mean, I think most of the time we were on top of here. And we see here the peaks and we're way below that. So yeah, we can go a little bit lower in open interest and that would be helpful. The low is 400,000 over here. And this is when I was calling for a, a pretty big rally, which is exactly what happened over here. This was a major low. And then we've been rallying ever since. So uh, yeah, open interest numbers in gold look good. We have the fuel for a, another takeoff exactly when it starts. We'll see, but the fuel is there. Rafi Faber examines recent volatility in silver and gold markets, noting silver's brief dip below $30 and its quick recovery. He discusses historical financial bubbles, emphasizing their relevance to current conditions and potential investment strategies. Faber highlights the low open interest in gold futures as a positive indicator for future rallies. He draws parallels between past and present economic scenarios, including post-WWI Berlin and the Great Depression underscoring the value of holding precious metals during economic crises. Barber's analysis suggests possible shifts in market dynamics and the strategic importance of precious metals and real estate investments. Gold to silver ratio. Uh, looking back to 2011, we have a trend line here from 2011 when it was about 30 to 1 to 2021, this is the silver squeeze top over here, when it was about 65, 63, something like that to one. And we've hit the trend line again over here at about 76 to one. Is that the number 76? I can't tell the red lines, like I, probably a six, yeah. So we have to break this trend line uh, to get to the next uh, silver, major silver rally. And I think we will. Pretty soon, we'll see if we can break it here. We might have a little bit of a bounce and then a breakthrough. Once this trend line breaks and it's a 12-year, 13-year trend line, I think we're going to be in for some fireworks is the point. I wanted to talk about this week. This is speculation on my part. The case isn't that strong here, but I just wanted to make it anyway um, as a possibility. So I looked at the charts from 2010 to 2011. Uh, and if you remember a few weeks ago on the Silver Report, I talked about the top in the 1970s at 650, corresponding to the top in 2010, the triple top, the triple top, sorry, the triple top at 650 in the 1970s, the triple top at 20, going into 2010, 2011, and now the triple top at 30 that was recently broken, and now uh, we're on our way higher. Uh, so this is from the triple top at 20, this final break over here in September 2010. Uh, you can see here the low in that week. This is a weekly chart. The low was 1959. So I looked at the at the daily charts. I didn't put that daily chart in here. It's too tedious, but just trust me. The daily chart shows that after we broke 20 for the third time, we were trading below 20 for about four trading days until the, the, the trend was sustained much higher to uh, another top, another local top about 30, 31. And then we had a three, uh, we had about a one month decline here and then all the way up to 50. Uh, so yeah, four trading days below 20, and that is very similar to what's happening now. Why? Uh, because this is the daily chart of the 2024 break of 30. Just like in 2010, we had a triple top break of 20. Uh, now we have a triple top break of 30, which corresponds to the CPI. Uh, and I went through that about three weeks ago. Uh, check the other silver reports and you'll see it. And so here's 30. We had a break of 30. And if you go down here, we had three trading days where we traded below 30 despite breaking the triple top at 30. It was three trading days uh, breaking below 30, just like we had four trading days breaking below 20 before we headed to another top. I'm surprised that we only broke through 30 very briefly. I thought we were going to go to the 50-week uh, moving average here, or 50-day moving average here. Yeah, the 50-day moving average. I, was, I wouldn't be surprised if we had went to 28, but we didn't go that low. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, it looks encouraging. And could it be that this will be a repeat of 2010 where we broke 20 briefly and then headed up to 30 and then to 50? Uh, it could be. Uh, I'm not predicting it necessarily in the next few months, but the point is it could happen and you got to be in and don't be surprised if it does because when it does happen, it's going to surprise everybody. About the miners, the miners are also on a trend line that it looks could be broken anytime now. 
So we've been, the higher this goes, the worse st uh, mining stocks are performing relative to gold and silver. So we have the, uh, the low here in 2022, uh, which was strong mining stocks. And we had a trend line hit over here in 2023. And this trend line is hitting again. Uh, so if we can break below this trend line, we can have a sustained rally. And mining stocks looks like that's what they wanted to do yesterday. We'll see if it can be sustained. Finally, I want to get into the goodies here. Uh, I promised that I would talk about the more extreme case than 75 ounces of silver for a house in Germany, in Weimar, Germany in 1923. So this is from the Diary of Benjamin Roth, a book that I'm reading, A Great Depression, a diary, page 121. So I highlighted here, if you want to try to make out my handwriting, uh, then you can try to uh, tease out the reason that I figured out that this happens. This is common sense back in 1933. Not everyone had common sense back in 33, but... Uh, Benjamin Roth had a, uh, a fair amount of it. So he says, inflation is a terrible thing, and I hope it will never come to America. This is an entry from July 1st, 1933. It penalizes saving and changing and changes the entire outlook of the prudent investor from government bonds, life insurance, etc., to speculative stocks and commodities. Yes, we all know this. It's the same now. The German mark before the war was worth almost 25 cents in American money. When inflation ended, right, in 1923, he's talking about a dollar would buy about a billion marks. During inflation, American speculators went into Germany and bought huge pieces of valuable real estate for sums as low as $50 in our money. Hunger, starvation, and ruin were the results of German inflation, and no country has it ever proven to be a blessing. Thanks for watching. This week, silver took us on a wild ride, dipping below $30 before bouncing back. We delved into the intriguing relationship between precious metals and real estate during economic turbulence, drawing insights from history. Keep an eye on the gold to silver ratio and gold open interest for potential market shifts. In other news, MKS PAMP Group is expanding its silver production in North America to meet rising demand.